morning student myself sandeep your physics teacher so welcome to physics class i have decided to take your life but whenever i was taking the life some students told me sir we are not hearing your voice so there are lot of complaint so i have decided to make a video for you that is flash video that is short video for the chapter light okay so it is for your convenient i am making this short video to revise this chapter light so now please digest this video don't undigest it because at least i have given 78 video from this chapter but you have undigested it you know very well what is undigested you know very well so please don't undigest try to understand i have worked hard in giving all these videos 78 videos i have given student but you don't have any videos you haven't seen the video if you would have seen na no problem i think you faced because each and every topic i have explained very minutely okay let's move the chapter light do you know light is very important for us of course it is very important for us we want to see anything we need light so light is very essential of course light is essential now you can raise the question suppose sir if we don't have the eye how we can see of course we don't have the eye we cannot see but if we don't have the light how we can see because in the eye you also have lens so light is very essential to see an object okay so now we will proceed the chapter light in the light we have to study reflection and refraction so see the figure i am showing you in the figure you see a block of wood in one side you are saying that is the block of wood is just bouncing back the light see you are seeing the block of wood you are saying that you are seeing the two figure one one way you are seeing that a block of wood is going underneath the water and one way you are seeing the block image of block of wood that is reversing that is bouncing back so that is reflection and one it is going beneath the water that is refraction so what is the difference between reflection and refraction the difference between reflection is that the bouncing back of the light is the reflection and refraction is what see it is going underneath the water so that is refraction so i mean i think you have understood what is reflection and what is refraction i am going in a short way now from the 8th standard class you have studied the laws of reflection there are two laws of reflection that is the angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of reflection you see incident ray that is incoming ray you got the incoming call that is incoming ray that is incident ray and after incident it reflected that is reflected ray so the, your first law that is angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of reflection you see in the figure incident ray and reflected ray and the second law is that the incident ray reflected ray and the normal drawn at the point of incidence lies in the same plane yes you see all these three rays are lying on the same plane what is the point of incidence where the incident ray meets where the incident ray meets see jahan pe incident ray meet hota hai that is the point of incidence so you you have got two laws that is the angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of reflection and the second is incident ray refracted ray and normal all lies at the same plane 
And what is the angle of incidence? The angle between the incident ray and the normal is called the angle of incidence. That is theta i. You see in the figure. And what is angle of reflection? The angle between the reflected ray and the normal is called angle of reflection. That is theta r. So these things I have explained and you have studied from 8th standard. So I think you don't have any problem in this. Now, image formation in a plane mirror. You are observing the, your face. You are seeing your face in the mirror. What is the properties of image that is formed in the plane mirror? Have you observed that? Your image size and the object size is same. Whatever you see in the mirror, your size is same. Whatever you are seeing in the mirror. Image distance is equal to object distance. Whatever the distance you are apart from the mirror, that much image is apart from the mirror. That is behind the mirror. Image is always erect. That is straight. Image is always erect. Image is always laterally inverted. It means your right hand seems to be left hand in the mirror and your left hand seems to be right hand. It means your right eye seems to be left eye and your left eye seems to be right eye. So it is laterally inverted. Image is always virtual. That is you seems that the image is behind the mirror. That's why it is virtual. So these, these are the properties that the image formed in the plane mirror. Now we will proceed further about the spherical mirror. So there are two types of spherical mirror. One is concave mirror and another is convex mirror. See concave mirror. See in the figure. Concave mirror. Concave means there is a cave. Reflec reflections takes place in the cave portion. And coating is outside. That is concave mirror. But in case of convex mirror, reflections takes place in the bulging side. And coating is inside. See in the figure. Concave mirror and convex mirror. So what is the difference between concave mirror and convex mirror? In the concave mirror, parallel rays converge. When the ray of light is that it converge. And focus is in front of the mirror. Rays actually meet at real focus. See in the diagram. See here, the parallel ray of light, that is incident ray, it converges at a point, that is at focus. And the image is forming in front of the mirror, that is concave mirror. But in the case of convex mirror, parallel rays diverge. Here the rays of light is not actually meeting, they are apart from each other. But when you produce backward, it appears to meet. See here. Here the ray of light is not actually meeting. Reflected rays are not meeting. But we produce backward. That is. You produce backward R1, R2. You get. That is. Here F. At point F. Here the. Rays of light meet. So it is actually diversing. And focus is behind the mirror. Here the rays of light are not actually meeting. It appears to meet. It is virtual because it is behind the mirror. Understand? What is the difference between concave mirror and convex mirror? Parallel rays of light actually converge. In the case of concave mirror, focus is in front of the mirror. And the rays actually meet at real point. That is at focus. But in convex mirror, parallel rays diverge. Here ray of light is not meeting. Focus is behind the mirror. Here the rays of light appears to meet. So before we proceed to the ray diagram, we should know the different terminology. 
there are different terms used in this mirror so we should know that that is center of curvature radius of curvature pole principal axis and aperture so what is center of curvature you see in the case of concave mirror or convex mirror we are using a part of the mirror isn't it if we draw diagram is this actually the part of the sphere so the center of this sphere is called center of curvature because it is actually the part of the sphere that's why we are calling center of curvature it is center of a sphere curvature is what the part of the mirror which is taking part in the reflection that's why we are we are speaking center of curvature because that part is taking part in the reflection so this is center of curvature is the center of the sphere that is center of curvature what is radius of curvature before radius of curvature let me discuss the pole what is pole the part of the mirror which is taking part in reflection the center of that is the pole you see in the diagram see it only few part is taking part in the reflection not whole sphere so the part which are taking part in reflection the center of that is the pole and what is the radius of curvature the distance between the center of curvature and pole is the radius of curvature whether you talk about the concave mirror or you talk about the convex mirror center of curvature radius of curvature pole all are same now principal axis what is principal axis see this is the center part it is not the actually line it is an imaginary line it is not the line which is passing through the center but we have taken an imaginary it is an imaginary line which is passing through the center of curvature and the pole so it is an imaginary line which is passing through the center of curvature and the pole that is the principal axis and what is aperture aperture is a part of the mirror which are taking part in the reflection only that part that is aperture it means the part of the mirror not the whole sphere the part of the mirror which are taking part in the reflection that is aperture so i think now you know all the terminology that i used in the spherical mirror now there is one relation between r and f you see here in the figure see here here i have drawn the concave mirror and one the principal axis which is passing through the center of curvature and the pole that is an imaginary line you observe that the center of curvature is twice the focal length and what is focal length focal length is the distance between the pole and the focus that is a focal length the distance between the focus and the pole is focal length so what is the relation between r and f f is equal to r by 2 it means focus is half the radius of curvature and what is radius of curvature radius of curvature you see again this figure radius of curvature radius it means the center of curvature you you when you draw any circle you take radius so the distance between the center of curvature and the pole is the radius of curvature the distance between the center of curvature and the pole is radius of curvature okay and center of curvature is the center center of the sphere no i am talking about the relation between f and r f is equal to r by 2 it means see here focus that is half the radius of curvature here radius of curvature is between c and a a actually here a is pole so r i can write is equal to 2f so radius of curvature is two times the focal length so this relation i have explained 
Again, I'm explaining. F is equal to R by 2 and R is equal to 2F. Is it clear? Now, before we are proceeding, the ray diagram of concave mirror or convex mirror, there are set of rules which are to be followed to understand the image formation by spherical mirror. So what are the rules? See in the figure. See in the figure. First, second and third. When the ray of light which passes through the center of curvature of a spherical mirror, after reflection it retraces the same path. That is, it goes along the same path. These are the rules which has to be followed when we start the ray diagram. So that's why I'm explaining this. Your first rule is that when the ray of light passing through the center of curvature, it traces the same path. That is your first rule. Your second rule is that when the ray of light passing through the focus, after reflection, it becomes parallel to the principal axis. And your third rule is that a ray of light parallel to the principal axis, after reflection, it passes through the focus. So you have three rules. Your first rule is that if the ray of light passes through the center of curvature, it retraces the same path. Second, when the ray of light passing through the focus, after reflection, it becomes parallel to the principal axis. And third rule is that a ray of light parallel to the principal axis, after reflection, it passes through the focus. It means rule number two and rule number three are inverse, opposite to each other. A ray of light passing the focus, after reflection, it passes through after passes the focus, after reflection, it becomes parallel to the principal axis. And third, a ray of light parallel to the principal axis, after reflection, it passes the focus. It is opposite to each other. So these are the rules you have to follow. Now we will proceed towards the ray diagram. Okay? We are seeing the three rules to be followed, which help in the process of making the ray diagram. Three rules I have explained. One rule is left, that is when the ray of light which is incident to the pole obliquely, it will reflect obliquely. That is the rule number four. So that I am explaining. That is this is a concave mirror. When the ray of light incident to the pole obliquely, it will reflect obliquely. So this is the rule number four. Okay. Now we will go step by step the image formation by a concave mirror. We will observe that when the object is very far, the image we are getting very diminished. So now step by step we put the object at different places and see where is the image forming. We will see step by step, one by one. Okay. We will discuss the ray diagram one by one and we will see the image formation by concave mirror. Three. Now we see the image formation by concave mirror. Image formation by concave mirror. So my first ray diagram when the object is at infinity. When the object is at infinity. This is my concave mirror. Okay. This is what? An imaginary line which we call principal axis. Here is the pole, here is the focus and here is the center of curvature. All things you know very well. So, my object is at infinity. Okay? So, we assume that the ray of light coming parallel to the principal axis. We assume it is not that parallel ray of light is coming from the infinity. Many rays are coming from the infinity, but we assume. Okay? A ray of light is coming from infinity that is parallel to the principal axis. You recall your rules. That is the rule, rule that is the ray of light parallel to the principal axis. It will pass through the focus. 
it will pass through the focus. I have taken one ray diagram. Now again I am taking second one. It will pass through the focus. Here you get the intersection point. Here you get the intersection point. So here I get the image where the line intersect. That is the point where we are getting the image. So here we are getting the image that is at focus. So my position of the image is at focus. And what is the nature of the image? See what is the nature? Image is forming in front of the mirror. Image is forming in front of the mirror. That must be real. And if it is real, it will be inverted. Okay? The nature of the image is real and inverted. And what is about the size of the image? See, you are getting only point-like structure. That is point-like object. That is highly dimmed. Bao chota. Highly dimmed. Position of the image is highly dimmed. So this is your first case. First ray diagram. When the object is at infinity, you are getting the image at focus. Nature that is real and inverted and highly dimmed. Size. Next. Second. When the object is beyond C, when the object is beyond C, I am drawing concave mirror that is not so accurate, but I am trying. This is your principal axis, this is your concave mirror, this is pole, this is focus, this is center of curvature. I am telling my object is beyond C. That is beyond C. I am keeping object here. Any problem? Okay. So now my first ray diagram. My first ray. That is a ray of light parallel to the principal axis. It will pass through the focus. So I am passing it. I am not uh, using the scale or getting past the focus. Now. We will do anything. Either you take the rule number two or you take the rule number three. You can draw it anyway. Now, third. Now, what I do, a ray of light passing through the center of curvature, it will retrace the same path. It will retrace the same path. So, see here. I am drawing like this. First, I have drawn a ray of light parallel to the principal axis, it will pass through the focus. Second ray that is passing through the center of curvature, it retraces the sample. You are getting the intersection point here. So, my image is here. Okay? So, where is the what is the position of the image? Between C and C and F. Okay, what is the nature? Nature is real and inverted. See, ultra image camera that is inverted, real and inverted. And what is the size of the image? It is smaller. That is dimmed. Not very very small, but it is small. So it is dimmed. That is size. Size is dimmed. Okay. Second case. When the object is beyond C, you are getting the image between C and F, and nature is real and inverted, and size is dimmed. Okay? Third is when the object is at C. This is your principal axis, this is your pole, this is your focus, this is the center of curvature. I am putting the object at center of curvature. A ray of light parallel to the principal axis. It will pass through the focus. 
okay and the ray of light passing to the focus it will pass to the see i'm not using the scale that's why it is not i'm getting the accurate image okay so see here a ray of light parallel to the principal axis it will pass to the focus a ray of light passing to the focus will become parallel to the principal axis so i am going according to the rules so where is the image where you are getting the intersection the section you are getting here it means position of the image at c at c that is same size what is the nature nature will be real and inverted real and inverted and about the size at the same size same size see here you are getting inverted image full time is will run that's why inverted and real and size is same okay now let's move to the next i'm bringing the object nearer to the mirror slowly slowly you are observing that when the object is between c and f object is between c and f this is your principal axis is very easy this is focus this is center of curvature okay any problem so first i am using a ray of light that is between c and f and uh, keeping the object here okay so a ray of light parallel to the principal axis it will pass through the focus and passing it okay again a ray of light passing through the focus it become parallel to the principal axis here you getting the intersection this one so a ray of light parallel to the principal axis it will pass through the focus after reflection a ray of light passing through the focus it become parallel to the principal axis after reflection so here you get the intersection point where you get the intersection point that is the image position so what is the position of the image that is beyond c beyond c and what is the nature of the image that is real and inverted real and inverted and what is the size size is enlarged size is enlarged clear any problem so when the object is between c and f you are getting the image beyond c nature that is real and inverted and size is enlarged okay let's see the next ray diagram when the object is at focus this is your pole this is your focus this is your center of gravity okay any problem now here is the object So a ray of light parallel to the principal axis it will pass through the focus. I am passing it. Any problem? And second, I can do either of the rules. A ray of light passing to the pole obliquely it will reflect obliquely. So I am using this obliquely it will pass obliquely. See. so you are not getting any intersection point isn't it you are not getting any intersection point means 
it will meet somewhere far. So we assume that the image formed at position of the image that is infinity. And what is the nature of the image? That is real and inverted. Real and inverted. Why real and inverted? Because it is forming in front of the mirror. Okay? And what is the size? That is enlarged. Enlarged, that is magnified image. Very enlarged. Enlarged. Highly magnified. Okay? So when the object is at focus, you are getting the image at infinity. Nature is real and inverted and size is enlarged. Okay? Now, next. And bringing the object closer to the mirror. Slowly, slowly. Now, I will bring the object more closer. When the object is between P and F. Object is between P P and F. This is your principal axis. This is your concave mirror. This is P. This is F. This is C. You are keeping this object here. Here is the object. Okay. So, what happened? When the ray of light parallel to the principal axis, it will pass through the focus. Focus is here. So, it will pass through the Pass to the focus. Okay. First, now again I am using the rule that array of light incident to the pole obliquely it will reflect obliquely. Incident to the obliquely at the pole it will reflect obliquely. But here we are not getting the intersection point actually. So we produce this ray diagram backward. So here I am getting the image. See, I have not drawn properly, but I am trying to explain. See, here is my pole. I am keeping the object between P and F here. So a ray of light parallel to the principal axis, it will pass through the focus. It will pass into the focus. Okay. And again, a ray of light which is incident at the pole obliquely, it will reflect obliquely. It is, but it is not meeting. So we produce this ray of light backward position. Okay, we extrapolate it. When we produce back, we are getting here the intersection point. It is not actually meet. It appears to meet. So we are getting the image behind the mirror. We are getting the image. We are getting behind the mirror. So position of the image is behind the mirror. And what about the nature? Tell me nature. You can recall it. What is the nature? Because it is we are not getting the image here in front of the mirror. We are getting the image behind the mirror. So will be virtual. Virtual and we get straight. See, object is also in this position. Image is also in this position. Not inverted. So virtual and erect. Virtual and erect. Okay. And about the size, it is enlarged.
Okay. So I think you have understood the ray diagram. Now we will discuss the image formation by convex mirror. We have done in the case of concave mirror six ray diagram, but in the case of convex mirror we will see only two ray diagram. Why? Because in the case of convex mirror, when the object is at infinity, we get the image at focus, and when the object is between infinity and pole. any place between infinity and pole we are going to get the image between pole and focus so if you keep the object any place between p and infinity you only get the image between p and f that's why we are only discussing the two ray diagram because wherever you put the object you will get the image between p and f and one special case that is when the object is at infinity you get the image at focus so let's discuss the image formation by convex mirror okay let's see by convex mirror okay student you know that concave mirror is a converging mirror and convex mirror is a diverging mirror i have explained this that concave mirror is a converging here the ray of light converges after reflection but in the case of convex mirror the ray of light diverges after reflection so see i am drawing convex mirror this is convex mirror inner part is coated and this is your reflecting part so this is principal axis in this case pole is here your focus is here and your center curvature is here right side not left side but in the case of concave mirror we are taking focus and center curvature left side but in the case of convex mirror we are taking focus and center curvature right side okay so first when the object is at infinity and the object is at infinity let's see <clears throat> little bit far let me draw f is there and c is there okay now a ray of light coming that is incident on convex mirror what happened either it will converge or it will diverge i have explained you in the case of convex mirror ray of light incident on it it will diverge so it will diverge see here it will diverge again i am taking ray of light it will diverge it is not converging it will diverge so what we do we extrapolate the ray ray of light that is we produce backward when we produce backward put half here i have not use the scale that unable to here you are getting intersection point so see here a ray of light incident on convex mirror it diverges when it is extrapolated that is produced backward we get the intersection point at f which is right side of the mirror so where you get the image what is the position of the image at f what is the nature of the image tell me what is the nature of the image image is forming right side of the mirror it means image is virtual and erect because it is right side of the mirror it is virtual and erect nature is virtual and erect and what is about the size of the image it is like point it is highly dimmed it is highly dimmed highly dimmed 
list. Okay? So when the object is at infinity, you get the image at f. Nature is virtual and right, and it is highly dimmed. Let's see the second. When the object is between p and f, that is p and f, right? Infinity and p. When the object is between between infinity and pole. This is your convex mirror. This is your principal axis. This is the pole. This is F. This is C. Okay. Now, when the object is between P and F, wherever you can put it, between F and D and pole, in any place you can put it. So suppose I am putting the image here. Okay. Object here. Sorry. I am putting the object here. Okay. So what happens? A ray of light incident. What happened? It will converge or diverge. It will diverge. So it will diverge. It will diverge. Now, again, I'm using the another rule: a ray of light passing incident to the pole. Obliquely, it will reflect. Obliquely. Isn't it? So in both the cases, the ray of light is diverging. Isn't it? Ray of ray of light is diverging. So you what you can do? You produce the ray of light backward. That is extrapolate. Produce it. Here we get the intersection point. Here we get the intersection point. Where you get between P and F. Between P and F. Okay. So what is the position of the image? Position of the image is between P and F. This is your position. And what is the nature of the image? That is virtual. This is opposed. Not arrow this side, arrow this side. Virtual and erect. Nature is virtual and erect. And what is the size? Size is dimmest. I have not used the scale. That's why it not seems like dimmest. But size is dimmest. So in the case of convex mirror, student. You are going to get the virtual image, erect image, and dimmest image. Definitely, no confusion. In the case of convex mirror, you will get virtual image, erect image, and dimmest image. In the first case, when the object is at infinity, you get highly dimmest image. But in the case when the object is between P and F, you get dimmest image. And nature, of course, virtual and erect. Okay, so please. See the video clip and observe carefully. I have explained the ray diagram once again. Already I have explained it, but you have requested, sir. Please explain. I have drawn in a short way so that you will able to understand because it is very. I have already given seventy eight video to you, but you haven't digested it. So once again, in a short stream, I am explaining this chapter. So that the student who have not attended the class, not attended the video, not seen the video, will see it once again. So ray diagram, there is six case in the case of concave mirror and two case in the case of convex mirror. So it is very simple. In the case of convex mirror, you are only getting the nature that is virtual, erect, and dimmest. And then in the case of concave mirror, only one case when the object is between P and F that you get the image behind the mirror. Another another other case. You get the image real and inverted. Only one case is there. In the case of concave mirror, when the object is between P and F, 
you are getting the virtual and direct image. And rest of the case, that is in the case of concave mirror, you are getting a real and inverted image. But in the case of convex mirror, you are only getting virtual and direct image. That is, see here. Here the ray of light is not actually meet, appears to meet. Okay? And we are getting virtual and direct image. So please revise the ray diagram you practice in your home because the more you practice, the more you become frankly in drawing the ray diagram. Otherwise, you feel tough. And this is not only the way that you have to make. You can make in another way also. Whichever rules you have to apply, whichever rules, it is not incorrect. Whatever your rules want to apply, you can apply it. It is not necessary that I am applying these rules, you have to apply these rules. No. In another book, you will see another rule is applied. So another diagram you can see. So it is, please don't get confused. You can see either of the rules. I am using this rule. It is not necessary that you are using this rule. I am only trying to explain you. Please use the rules. Whichever you wish to apply it, you can apply it. Okay? Okay, student. We have just discussed now the image formation by concave mirror and convex mirror. Now we will proceed sign convention. It is very important because if you have to solve the numericals, you should know the sign convention. So let us understand the sign convention. Okay? Let us see. Sign convention. Now, I am drawing concave mirror. Okay. Here I am drawing convex mirror. Okay. This is your concave mirror. And this is your this is your concave mirror. And this is your convex. Okay. So, related to sine convention, here it is F and here it is C. And here it is F and here it is C. So, in related to concave mirror and convex mirror, Whatever is in the left hand side of the mirror, that is in front of the mirror, that is negative. It means object distance <coughs> taken negative in both the case, where it is concave mirror or where it is convex mirror because object is always placed in front of the mirror. So whatever is in front of the mirror, object distance taken as negative, that is U is negative in case of concave mirror. U is also in case of convex mirror. Okay? Image distance. In the case of concave mirror, in all the cases, you got the real and inverted image. Only one case, that is when the object is between P and F, you get the virtual and erect image. So for the real image, Real image is you get in front of the mirror. So that is negative. Negative in case of real image and positive in case of virtual image. And here in the case of convex mirror, we always get the virtual and erect image that is positive. Is it clear? Now, this is focal length. This is radius of curvature. This is focal length. And this is radius of curvature. That is radius. So, focus. Focal length. In case of concave mirror. In case of concave mirror. Focal length in case of concave mirror will be negative because focal length is in front of the mirror. But in case of convex mirror, 
focal length is just in behind the mirror see here so it is positive radius of curvature is in front of the mirror so it is positive negative okay but here behind the mirror that is right side of the mirror so radius of curvature is positive clear so this is the sign convention object distance will be negative in both the concave lens and convex lens image distance will be negative when the image is real but virtual then it will be positive but in the case of convex mirror it will be positive because you are getting the image right side of the mirror in the case of if you talk about the focal length that will be negative because it is in front of the mirror that's why i am taking negative and here it is right side of the mirror that's why i am taking positive Radius of curvature, concave mirror, negative, here positive. Okay. One thing more. So you can also one thing more. Whatever whatever is taken above the principal axis, whatever that is above the principal axis is taken as positive and whatever below the principal axis taken as negative just one very shortcut trick you know the axis this is the axis here it is negative here it is positive it is plus this is minus this is y axis this is x axis so you remember this whatever the left hand side negative right hand side positive up positive down negative okay now so it is used in the mirror formula and magnification it is used so our mirror formula is 1 by v plus 1 by u is equal to 1 by f this is the mirror formula and magnification can be written as h dash by h which is equal to minus v by u this is the height of the image height of the object this is image distance this is object distance so this is focal length so this is the formula by this formula and sign convention you are able to solve the numericals where to put v minus where to put u minus i have just explained you in the sign convention this is not minus, this is h dash, h dash by h. Height of the image, if the image is above the principal axis, then it will be positive. It is for real image, see real. For real image, for real image, height of the image will be, it is, for real and inverted image, it will be negative. For real image, it will be negative. Why? Because always it forms an inverted image. <coughs> but for virtual image, height of height of the image that is erect, it is above the principal axis that is positive. This is virtual. Okay, this is virtual, not V. It is virtual. Virtual image, positive. So for real image, height of the image is negative because real inverted image we got that is negative. For virtual image, we get positive. Okay, so this is the sign convention, dear student. So you just, if you have the video, then it's okay. If you don't have the video, please revise this sign convention very clearly. Otherwise, you can't able to solve the numericals. When I complete the portion after refraction, then I will practice few numericals also because I have given a lot of numericals to the students who have done the class, who have seen the video I have taken a lot of numericals for practice but now I am making short video for all the students so that they will understand and they will practice in their home all the concepts I have given sign convention is very very important where, where 
the object distance taken negative when the object distance taken positive you should know object distance is negative for both the so once again i am repeating object distance is negative for both the cases concave mirror and convex mirror image distance varies image distance is concave mirror in all the cases is negative but only virtual image when you get the virtual image then image distance should be positive when i talk about the height of the image and height of the object if height of the image is above the principal axis then it will be positive and if it is below the principal axis then it will be negative just you remember this trick just you remember this trick and you can get it this is negative this is positive this is y axis positive this is negative whatever above the principal axis will be taken as positive whatever below the principal axis will be taken as negative okay here is the magnification of the formula height of the image by height of the object here image distance by object distance so you have to apply the sign convolution in solving the numericals then only you can solve the problems in the next class i will begin with refraction and i hope whatever i have taught reflection you would have understood yes of course i have not given the numericals because if i will first of all clear your concept whatever i have explained you then only you can solve the numericals this sign convention is very very important whatever i have given it is already given in the book but still i have explained you so that you will understand very clearly okay so this is your mirror formula and this is the magnification magnification you can write as dash by h and minus y u okay one thing more student while solving the numericals any numericals while solving the numericals you keep in mind the sign convention because without sign convention you can't be able to solve the problem any problem you can't why do we need the sign convention suppose u has been given suppose u has been given okay 10 v has been given 50 and f we have to find or v we have to find f is given 5 now whether v is positive or negative i can't able to explain where is the image is forming whether the image is forming in front of the mirror or image is forming behind the mirror if it is forming in front of the mirror then it will be positive sorry negative then it will be negative and it if it will form behind the mirror then it will be positive that's why we are needing sign convention there is a trick also and i have explained the sign convention where to use plus sign and where to use minus sign so please concentrate in the sign convention and try to solve the numericals if you feel any problem in numericals yes you can raise it i come in live and solve the problem okay so you please solve the numericals of the ncert book very good numericals are given there you can solve it and if you feel any problem i am just in front of you i will solve it okay so please try to understand the concept of the sign con convention it is very very important once again i am repeating sign convention is very very important for you so try to understand whatever i have explained if you feel any problem you can raise it yes i am in front of you to explain you okay okay student in the next class i begin with the new concept that is a refraction of light till now whatever i have given the video you please follow that and try to understand okay thank you student